let's talk about everybody's Yay. favorite topic. <laughs> uh, what is your ideal penis size? Okay, so my ideal penis size is about one inch above average. <laughs> you were going to um, say one inch, and I was like, wow. Yeah, I like micros. No. <laughs> one inch above average. So many guys just got really excited. <laughs> They're like, fuck yeah, she likes small dicks. <laughs> Micro penises, woo. Uh, no, so like an average size penis is about like five inches or so, right? Five, so, and, yeah, five, five, five and, and a half. half. Yeah, it's on, it's on my PDF. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I like, like about one inch above average because... Yeah, I feel like it, that's that's for like long term dick, mm -hmm. right? But then if the you boyfriend have like dick. the boyfriend dick, yeah. But if you're having like a one night stand or something like that, then you know I could do like like an eight inch mm -hmm. eight inch cock for a night or two, mm -hmm. you know. But but not long term. But not long term. Yeah. So the, the no go area for me is is the the sorry guys, uh, small penis zone. I can't I can't do it. Can't do the small penis. I can't do it. Mm. Especially the the skinny ones. Mm -hmm. For me, it's just not. Uh, have you ever been with a guy and and that showed itself and you were like like how just do you left. get yeah like how yeah. do you get out of like what do you do? So I just I've never been with a guy like with a small penis or just a dick that I didn't like in general. Oh, okay, but um, yeah, there was this one time. This was a long time ago, man. I went on a date and I was really into the guy. We had mad chemistry. He was hot. Uh, we went back to my place and we started fooling around. Well, he pulls his penis out and it was really small. So I I told him, um, I was like, listen, like, I think you're really nice and I'm really into you. Oh, no. But I just oh, said no. I wanted to take things slow. Oh, no. When the sentence starts with, I think you're really nice, you're in trouble. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not like going in trouble. And I was like, I just, I was like, I just want to take things slow. Like, I'm not ready yet. And then, um, yeah, and then I never called him after oh, that. No. <laughs> but I couldn't do it. I was like, it's too too small like yeah. what am I gonna do with it I mean at least you know you're honest yeah about it you yeah know? I mean, <laughs> I mean it, to, to me it's like what are you gonna sleep with that person and then what have to fake an orgasm mm -hmm. or or not I mean I don't know I just yeah or just like not do. be satisfied I mean yeah look I guess it's like Otherwise, you're just friends, right? If that sexual yep. chemistry and attraction isn't there, then you're just friends. Yeah. Then so, and if like, friend zone. yeah, and if mm -hmm. like, a, you know, and I, you know, a six inch penis is not like a huge ask, I don't think. I don't think like so. a lot I of guys, think... I think, fall into that category. I think you know? so. I, you know, I haven't looked at my. I should have looked at my PDF before okay, yeah. I got here. So I literally have. This... I have PDF. all of the the dictistics. On the PDF, like everything from length, width, girth, stamina, pumps per minute, uh, which cock is like which country has the biggest cock in the world, which is Brazil. Um, I should have looked at it though to refresh my memory on okay. this because I have all the facts on dicks. Okay. I could send it to you actually. Yeah. So yeah. what what was this where was this dick PDF <laughs> born out of? Like it just seems like a very random thing to have. Uh, Clearly, like it has some purpose. Yeah, so this is actually really fun. It's probably going to sound weird. My mom actually helped me come up with this because she was like, Corey, we need to get you started on YouTube. Um, she goes, I really think that you should just bring in guys and interview them and talk about dicks and what they think their dick is like and then just start throwing like mad dick statistics at them. She goes, I can write you a PDF, um, you know, and I was, like, I was like, mom, I was like, mom, this is a great idea. Um, and we actually, we filmed one episode, but I don't know. We just never, like, maybe I should go. What do you guys think? Should I start my YouTube channel about dictistics? I don't know. Um, I'm yeah, telling we you, just it's never... a very popular topic on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, we just never, like, I don't know. We filmed one episode, and I wasn't too happy with it, so I just didn't keep going with it. But, mm -hmm. yeah, I had all, she created all these PDFs for me. So there was one on um, dicks. There was one on monogamy, polygamy, BDSM, all kinds of things that people are uncomfortable. Most people are uncomfortable about talking about. But mm -hmm. but yeah, we wanted to talk about it. So. Wow. Yeah. Thanks, mom. Oh, yeah. Tell me more <laughs> about your mom. Like your mom sounds <laughs> rad. Your mom sounds like my mom. Just like yours, right? Yeah. But yeah. my mom's not organized enough. Like she's never going to make me a PDF. She doesn't even know what a fucking PDF is. Like, <laughs> so she my mom was a teacher. <laughs> So that's why she's so so organized and everything. Like she she helps me with my my interviews. She helps me. Um, she helps me with my social media. She helps she helps me with everything. Wow. 
Wow. She's like like a momager, you know. Wow. Like when I when I did Playboy and I started doing OnlyFans, she's like, okay, sweetie, you know, whatever makes you happy. She's and now she's like, yeah, my my daughter's in penthouse. And my mom knows who you are and who your oh, mom is. Wow. And she was actually super excited for me coming in today. She was like, oh my God, I didn't know that you shot with Holly Randall for Penthouse. She's like, huge deal. Congratulations. Oh my God. Thanks, yeah. mom. <laughs> so mom, like, you're oh. so cool. <laughs> yeah. That's great. I yeah. mean, so many people don't have those stories when they tell their mom like what they do. Yeah. So it's a huge support system, which yeah. I think is incredibly important. She doesn't look down on anything that I do. She's always been supportive. That's and, great. So yeah. you were never like nervous to tell her about what you were no, doing? No, no, never. She knew that I always wanted to do Playboy too. Like I would tell her that I was getting fake boobs when I was like 13, mm -hmm. like something ridiculous. She's like, so she knew. Yeah. But yeah, she's always been supportive. That's great. What about your dad? My dad's been supportive. Like he knows, he knows that I've done, you know, all these different magazine stuff. He knows I have an OnlyFans. Um, it's just with my dad, it's more of like I don't really. He doesn't like look at my content or anything. Yeah. You know, he's like, he's like, you know, he goes, Corey, I'm proud of you. Like, again, he supports me. He's just like, like I don't want to see. You know, yeah. he's like, I'm not gonna go buy the penthouse magazine and look at it. You know, he's yeah. just like, congratulations, Corey. <laughs> yeah, and that feels like in a very like appropriate dad reaction right. to have. Right. Like the father who like can't wait to see your nude layout. That's that's that would that's be, a little too supportive. It's a little yeah, weird. Talk about daddy issues. But, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really amazing. I love that. So, what do you think your key has been to becoming successful? Um. I would just say being driven and passionate um, and constantly looking for the next, like constantly having goals, mm -hmm. uh, not getting too comfortable. Mm -hmm. um, I think like the main thing is not getting too comfortable because when I get comfortable then I'm like, oh shit, like what's the next move? Yeah. You know? But do you feel like sometimes, because I know for me, sometimes I feel like that's a double-edged sword, you know, like I always have this ambition and this drive to uh -huh. do the next thing, which is great and always like, you know, keeps us sort of ahead of the game or whatever but then you, there's also like that other side which is like you're never like satisfied yeah. and it's kind like a double edged sword like yeah it's saying, like why are satisfied. we doing all of these things like does it actually make us happy mm -hmm. like what actually makes us happy like you know what i mean yeah Do i you know have exactly what you mean absolutely existential crises yeah yeah but then it's it like you said literally double edged sword because it's like okay if I wasn't like that then I wouldn't be where I'm at mm -hmm. and then I wouldn't be like constantly thinking of new things but then again it's like okay sometimes you have to sit back and just appreciate what you have yeah yeah so, yeah no absolutely <laughs> but you have to take time to just chill yeah I mean sometimes I really am envious of the people who have like the nine to five that just like leave their job at the job yep. they don't bring it home yep. like they do their job they go home at five and then like they do and they the thing and, make them, the and they day. clock back in the next day and they're like cool with that and they don't mm -hmm. you know need to be like the most successful person at whatever and yeah they don't need to you know make the most money they just like their priorities are, are different and yeah. sometimes i'm like are, those, are they happier than me i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i wonder that too though you know, yeah, I wonder that every day. Yeah, I think that that's a, like the curse of any like career-oriented person. Mm -hmm. You know, definitely. 